Everybody hates tutorial intros, and I promise I get this done in under two and a half minutes, so let's jump in. First up, grab a pen and a piece of paper and draw two high contrast dots. Up next, stick the paper to the wall. Then grab your phone or your favorite camera. You should shoot as much footage as you think you'll need for your project. Keep in mind that the distance between your camera and the wall will greatly affect the shake. At a close distance, the shake will be more severe and noticeable, and at greater distances, it'll be more subtle. Next, let's jump into After Effects. Once you're in After Effects, import your footage and then drag it here to create a new composition. After that, right-click in the timeline and let's create a new null object. Click here to make it a 3D layer. Go ahead and rename that null object something easy to remember. Next, double-click on your footage layer. From here, select the tracker on the right side of the screen. If you don't see it, go up to Window and click Tracker. Choose Track Motion. Make sure to select Position, Rotation, and Scale. Next, move the tracking selectors around your dots. Increase the sizes of the boxes until they fully encompass each dot. Make sure your playhead is the beginning of the video clip. Then push play. This may take a minute or two. Go in and let it sit. We're going to get all that sweet, sweet tracking data. Once completed, choose Edit Target. Then select your null object, hit OK. Next, click Apply. We want to apply coordinates to X and Y, and then click OK. Now you can see that we've converted all that handheld movement into position, scale, and rotation keyframes on our null object. Now, let's jump into our composition that contains our footage. Right-click and choose New, Camera. For this example, we're going to use the 35mm preset and disable Depth of Field. To get this warning, just click OK. Next, put this little box on our footage to make it a 3D layer. Keep in mind that our camera movement will only be visible on layers that are 3D. Next, paste in the null object we created in the last composition. Now, parent your camera layer to the null object. If we push play, we can see that the motion has been applied to the scene. You may need to go ahead and scale up your footage to fully fill the frame, depending on how severe your camera shake gets. If your footage is slightly rotated to the left or right, drop down the transform options for the camera, go to orientation, and adjust the last value to offset that rotation. All right, so now that we've covered the basics, I wanna go over a couple of the things you can do with a simple camera setup within After Effects. Let's take a look at this animated uh, jungle scene. Now, you can see the camera shake has been applied, so we're getting that nice handheld camera movement. Let's push this a little bit further. Uh, before we move on though, I wanna just break down what's going on here so everyone understands. Basically, we just have a series of 2D layers that have been animated and pre-comped. Those are all just spread out within 3D space. Again, not a lot happening here. Uh, it may look more complicated than it actually is. Let's go to the camera settings for the scene and go ahead and turn on a depth of field. Okay, and now we're gonna switch from our active camera to the top-down view of our whole scene. Now the pink lines here represent the camera, the sort of cone that we see here. And then each of these other lines represent each of the layers in our scene, the different fronds and the trees, etc. Okay, let's go our camera and drop down the camera options. Here we can see our focus distance, and by adjusting these values, we can move it forward or backward in our scene. It's represented by this line here. Okay, now let's go back to our active camera. And we're actually gonna set a couple of keyframes here and animate our focal distance. So we're really just moving the focal plane. So right now, you can see we've got it on this very first layer of grass. So we're gonna put some keyframes here. Then we're gonna move a few seconds down on our composition. And we're gonna move the focal plane further down into our scene. And by adjusting this focus distance, we should now see the focal plane shift over the scene over that course of a couple of seconds based on our keyframes. Let's preview this. And you can see how our focal plane shifts from being right in front of the camera to a little bit deeper into our scene. Adding a little depth of field will really help polish a scene. Hey, now if we go back into our camera options, we can also adjust uh, things from it within here, the focal distance like we just did, the aperture, the s-stop. For our purposes, let's go ahead and drop the s-stop down to 1.8. And you can see now, by dropping our f-stop down to 1.8, we've really cranked up the uh, sort of a blur on our lens here. So keep that in mind as another way to sort of polish and adjust the overall amount of 
a uh, blur added to the scene. Now lastly, let's say we wanted to add a camera zoom through our scene here. Uh, now instead of trying to add keyframes to our existing handheld null object, let's create a new one. Go ahead and parent our existing handheld tracker to the new null, and then we're gonna add a couple of keyframes. And we're starting here, and then we're gonna move down at our uh, sequence and add a keyframe uh, about 250 pixels in. Now let's preview that. And we can see not only are we still getting that rack focus that we set up earlier, but now we're pushing that handheld plane forward into our scene, which is also controlling the camera. I appreciate you guys checking this out. And if this has been helpful, please drop a comment, wipe, subscribe, and we'll catch you next time.